Hello guys and welcome back to the Current Case Podcast. Uh, This isn't one of our normal episodes. Today is June 24th. Um, This is kind of an emergency episode. So basically the whole idea behind this is that I will literally just upload this audio here by tonight. It's not going to really edit it out too much. Maybe we'll get rid of some pauses and stuff like that. But otherwise, I'm going to get things out as soon as possible. So you'll be hearing this the same day. Um, Ashton is joining me for this, and, uh, well, we have a lot to discuss here, and hopefully we don't have to do too many of these, uh, special episodes, or emergency episodes, because when we do these, there's shit kicking off, basically, and, of course, it, it's a lot better to kind of get things out on the same day over, uh, waiting, like, a, a week or so to get it out, so, shit has been kicking off. Since yesterday, um, we've basically had an attempted Russian coup, and now it actually kind of looks like things are winding down at the moment. I'm, of course, getting updated live, looking at essentially everything, and uh, it looks like this has kind of turned into the ultimate blue ball event. But Ashton, do you want to go ahead and kind of explain the background of what's happening here, and we'll kind of discuss what's happening currently. Okay, so... The ongoing feud between the Wagner PMC group and the Russian Ministry of Defense that's been going on in the backdrop of the ongoing Russo-Ukrainian war just spilled out into open civil war. Yeah. Now, this is, this has actually been something that's been brewing, I think, pretty much ever since the start of this war. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, Wagner, the PMC group Wagner, is actually one of the few, is one of the very few competent formations of the Russian armed forces that have been fighting in Ukraine. They're the ones that take that have been take, taking ground in and around Bakhmut. Mm-hmm. And now, most recently, they decided to go mm, against their own government. But why is this, you might ask? Well, it seems all the while the Battle of Bakhmut was going on, there's been a massive feud going on between you know, Wagner and it, mm, Wagner's chief, Yevgeny Prigozhin, and the Russian Ministry of Defense, most notably Sergei Shoigu and Valery Gerasimov. Yep, very nice. <clears throat> yeah. In a lot of ways, mm, you can see seeds of this throughout the course of the battle of, oh, for Bakhmut and the surrounding areas, because mm-hmm. you've got... Mm, I remember when the Wagner forces took Solodar, to which is a small town to the north of Bakhmut. Yep. The uh, Russian Ministry of Defense decided to swoop in and steal the credit for that. Mm. Not to mention, they've also been trying to steal credit for a lot of other Wagner actions. Despite the fact that, given the fact that the VDV and many of the guards units that the Russian military deployed early on this war have been gutted at this point, Wagner is one of the only few effective formations still left in the Russian army in Ukraine. No, I probably shouldn't say Russian army because Wagner is a private military group. Yep, mercenaries. And so it kind of gives you the background. Um, what was yeah. that city they took yesterday? Um, the Wagner group? Yeah. I believe that was Rostov-on-Don yeah. in Russia. So I thought. And then kind of keeping updated today, they've been slowly making their way to Moscow. But literally about 10 minutes ago, Apparently, there's some kind of deal brokered by uh, Lukashenko in Belarus. Um, <laughs> so I'll kind of read what's been happening now, because everyone, like even me, I'm literally confused right now. Everyone's trying to like theorize. It's a lot of just uh, info wars at the moment, basically, because not everyone is like no one can really make sense of exactly what's happening. So basically, um, of course, everyone's been calling him Pringles, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, Pringles, he's been making his way out close to Moscow at this point. Uh, I know Moscow actually declared martial law, and Putin rumoredly fled to uh, St. Petersburg. And <laughs> Lukashenko, I heard yesterday, went over to Turkey. And from there, supposedly Lukashenko's been in contact with Pringles and kind of told him to try to make a deal with Putin, um, like try to negotiate with him, see if something can be worked out. And now, and this is happening about like 20 minutes or so, this kind of brokered that um, some deal was made. uh, Supposedly, we don't, there's audio of this, but again, there's a lot of deep fake that kind of happens everywhere. So supposedly Pringles promised that um, he is going to bring his troops back to Ukraine, basically, that this was over um, and that there was some type of deal made between 
uh, Pringles and Putin at the moment. So no one really knows exactly like what the <laughs> what the whole point of this was, or if this was even real, or like if this truth, this peace deal was even real in the first place as well. Because like literally today, you heard Putin saying that uh, Wagner is now a terrorist organization and was working to label them as a terrorist organization. And then all of a sudden, they're going to uh, declare a ceasefire or a truce and just go home and pretend like none of this happened. That's kind of weird. And I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this as well. Ashton, what do you make of that? Yeah, it's certainly a strange strange sequence of events. I would I would definitely agree with that. I think if, if this deal did happen... It's because Putin, Shoigu, and Gerasimov, they know that Wagner is one of the few still competent forces they still have in, in their corner. Mm -hmm. And if they were to lose that, then they basically, they basically have no chance of doing anything else in Ukraine other than slowly withdrawing as the Ukrainians push them out. Right. And but at the same time, at the same time, though, I'm honestly suspecting this deal might not last very long. Because mm -hmm. I think the straw that broke the camel's back, what led to this was some sort of, or I think it was a contract that Putin basically, that the uh, Russian MOD basically forced upon Wagner, upon uh, Akhmad Kadyrov, and basically all the other proxy forces that Russia has brought into Ukraine to help it fight, mm -hmm. basically making them entirely subservient to the Russian MOD in Shoigu. Right. Um, yeah, it's... It's weird, is, is what I'm saying, like this deal, like I know a lot of people aren't exactly buying it, like there's even some people saying this is a staged event from the beginning, but at the same time, I mean, why would Putin go out of his way to like label, or try to label, or state that Wagner was a terrorist group and then immediately roll over to them, like I figured he would do that in the first place and kind of throw out his old military advisors. Yeah, but the thing you got to remember is that Shoigu in particular, he's been at this for quite a while. He's pretty much survived every purge, every scandal that's befallen the Russian <clears throat> the Russian government ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union. And mm -hmm. not only has he survived, but he's also thrived. Right. Yeah, he sucks as a military guy, but in terms of being a Russian politician... Shoigu is excellent at that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, the kind of, I guess you can maybe call it a tinfoil hat theory, but, I mean, knowing Russia, you really never know at this point that this whole thing was like a staged event, possibly, just the, given that it's now seemingly wrapped up. But at the same time, um, no one exactly knows for sure. I mean, do you think this <laughs> this would be something that was staged? Like this honestly, whole... honestly, I highly doubt that because this feud has been going on, pre like I said, pretty much since the start of the war. Mm -hmm. And there's also been incidents of skullduggery between Wagner and regular Russian forces long before this whole series of events happened. Right. I mean, even so far as back in Syria in 2016, when U.S. troops fired upon what were essentially Russian PMCs, mm -hmm. those were Wagner forces. But, and the reason why they opened fire on, on those guys is because they got in contact with their, with the Russian forces deployed in Syria to try and figure out who was there because these troops had, par had crossed over into the U.S.'s basically zone of t concern. Mm -hmm. And when the Russian forces in Syria radio back, no, those guys aren't ours, the U.S. Guy, the US Air Force nurse proceeded to bomb them to hell. So yeah, this has been going on for quite a while, and I don't see it ending anytime soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So I guess maybe, huh, that's, I mean, yeah, I don't think it can go back. Obviously, it's not going to be like, oh, back to normal again, back to uh, bombing the hell out of Ukraine. Well, I, like, it's a good thing, like, we didn't want... You definitely didn't want Pringles taking over Russia or taking control of Russia. I don't think that was his goal at the end of the day, but he's definitely even more unhinged in comparison to Putin. And, uh, like, I hate to say it, but Putin has at least kept the country somewhat stable. Um, but you have a guy like this take over, like, and with all of those nuclear weapons, like, you literally have no idea what can happen. I know I told yeah. you, Ashen, this morning, it's like a sequel to uh, Crimson Tide. Yeah, I noticed that. I will say, Prigozhin definitely seems to have a more, I guess, realistic grasp on the situation Russia faces in Ukraine, and he's been very vocal about this, which is part of the reason why he's 
been at odds with the Russian MOD because mm-hmm. I think it's Surovikin, Igor, Igor Surovikin, that's the spokesperson for the Russian MOD. Right. If you listen to some of the stuff that Surovikin puts out there on official state sponsored media, you'll clearly realize that, that none of that lines up with what's actually happening. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Shoit and uh, Prigozhin, on the other hand, seems to have a more realistic take. Now, whether he's simply doing this because he wants to try and genuinely try and fix Russia's situation there, or if he's simply doing it just so he can get more support at the expense of Shoigu and Gerasimov, Mm -hmm. take your pick on that front. Right. But also, given the fact that his the organization under Prigozhin's command literally does have no Mm neo-Nazis, look up Dmitry Utkin if you're curious. Mm-hmm. that his organization literally has neo-Nazis in the highest ranking. Also kind of ironic, given that one of Russia's stated goals was to denazify Ukraine. Right. Say. Yeah. Wagner's full of neo-Nazis. Yeah. And it's not the only organization, I guess, third-party organization fighting alongside Russia and Ukraine. Mm-hmm. I think there's another organization called the Tsar's Wolves. Right. That's similar. See, my big question is, why did Putin not work to kind of unify um, these organizations before the invasion of Ukraine? Well, that comes down to authoritarian politics. <clears throat> Ultimately, the, mm, the despot, mm, the tyrannical despot, in this case Putin, he does, mm, his biggest fear is someone rising up through the ranks, mm-hmm. gathering enough charisma and, mm, and resources that could potentially challenge him for the throne. Mm. <clears throat> the place this is most likely to come from is his military forces. Part of the reason why the Russian army is proven to be so incompetent was because many of the reforms Putin enacted into this army were basically meant to try and prevent anyone smart and competent from rising through the ranks to challenge him. Mm -hmm. Right. But this also just as much applies to many of the third-party organizations. If anything, setting up additional organizations like Wagner and the Tsar's Wolves, Mm -hmm. as well as allowing Kadyrov to establish his own private army of pro-Russian Chechens, this whole divide-and-conquer approach means that he can, Putin can basically pit pit each of these organizations against each other, have them compete for his favor, Mm -hmm. because if they're too busy fighting each other, they're not going to be fighting him. Right. You can see a lot in that same sort of thing in Nazi Germany, ironically enough. Yep, you can. So I will kind of get back to the recent developments here so we can kind of make sense of it and kind of give what our general thoughts are, what's going to, how this is going to play out from here on out. Um, obviously, there's been conflicting information with uh, Prigozhin and Wagner. Uh, of course, I think now the mainstream media is reporting that, are reporting this deal that Belarus had proposed and that Wagner is turning around. At the same time, I'm also seeing reports, not necessarily by mainstream media, but reports that uh, Wagner is not turning around, that they didn't accept this deal. But at the same time, apparently this deal has to, uh, makes changes to the current def- defense minister. So mm. apparently yeah, and I, think those, and I think those concessions to the Russian MOD were what Prigozhin hated and what caused this whole thing. So if the deal is true, it sounds like they gave Wagner exactly what they wanted. And if that's yeah. true, how has that changed the scope of Ukraine? Well, I think the Russian, uh, the regular Russian forces in the Wagner are going to be a lot less trusting of each other. That's mm-hmm. mu- That much is for certain. Right. So I think at best for the Russians... There's not going to be very many more operations in which Wagner is going to take a major role in going forward. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> like, if you're Putin, how do you trust Prigozhin after this? It's like you had a man like I think yeah, Ash and I we both agree that the fake coup is probably just a crazy theory. I don't think it makes any sense. Yeah, um, like I said, I think I think um, Prigozhin's whole. Oh, goal with this was to basically get at Shoigu and Gerasimov. Yes, exactly. Remove them for ineffective commandership. Well, if you're Putin, I mean, you literally called Prigozhin a terrorist earlier. Like, how do you just trust the guy after this? Like, how is he able? Well, like, how does he keep his position? Honestly, well, I think the fact is, Putin never trusted any of his subordinates to begin with. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> do you think he just tolerates Prigozhin, or does Prigozhin get the window treatment, or? 
What do you think happens from here? I think from here on out, some of Putin's remaining allies and like the FSB are going to be keeping a closer eye on him. Yeah. Probably going to be, probably might even try to assassinate him if he tries to do something like this again. Mm. Okay. But, so mm, go ahead, Ashton. Yeah, but people like Prigozhin, Shoigu, Gerasimov, of Utkin, all of them that are subservient to Putin are living in a constant state of fear. If they don't really impress the boss, if they don't manage to achieve their stated goals, their ass is grass. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> exactly. And you get the, you get the window treatment. Yep. Now, from the other side, I guess we have to figure out which one we're more inclined to believe at the moment. The other side is that this deal was fake, or that uh, Wagner didn't agree to this deal, um, and currently they're still on their way to Moscow. I mean, I think it, right now it's kind of a big fog of war moment because no one really knows for sure. Obviously, the mainstream media is reporting the deal at the same time. It can't be confirmed yet. Yeah, and we saw a lot of this also happen when this whole situation broke out back in February of last year. Lots, <clears throat> lots of cl unclear and conflicting information coming from various sources. Mm -hmm. right. so, if this so if it's that side playing out, and let's say this deal didn't occur, that uh, Prigozhin didn't agree to it, um, how does this play out? So essentially the coup is continuing. Well, at the end of the day, like I said, Wagner is a mercenary group, and mercenaries at the end of the day are only loyal to their paycheck. Mm -hmm. so, but, I should also, but I should also mention one key thing. Yeah. Technically speaking, under Russian law, PMCs such as Wagner are illegal. Right. They're not supposed to exist. The only reason why mm, Wagner even exists in the first place is because Putin permitted it to do so. Mm -hmm. And if mm, and if Wagner is continuing, then almost certainly Putin is going to send in Roskvardia and the S FSB to mm, put them down. Right. And at that point, mm, Prigozhin's ass is definitely grass. Yeah, exactly. It's I can see like, so which side do you believe right now? Are you just kind of wanting to wait for more information to come into place? Like, are, do you believe that deal was made, or do you think this is all kind of suspicious? Like, why would Putin just call him terrorist and then suddenly accept the deal later on? I, as of right now, I currently find it suspicious that hmm, Putin would label him a traitor and a terrorist, and only to strike a deal with him these days, um, and almost immediately afterwards. Right. But I think I'll hold off my final judgment until we have some more clear information on this. Yeah, hopefully we'll get it tonight, or at least sometime later today. Obviously, again, this is still kind of a very rapidly developing situation at the moment. Um, it's It was definitely a giant shit show, that's for sure. But until we have more information, it's hard to really make a call on what exactly is happening, whether it was an actual deal or whether or not uh, Wagner didn't accept it and are still on their way to Moscow. I'm trying to get an update as we speak and see if there is anything. Again, just back and forth from what I'm kind of looking at live threads of this and stuff, a lot of back and forth with some people posting sources of, of uh, Pringozhin saying no deal while others saying, yep, there is a deal. So, but either way, this definitely, I think we can both agree, this hurts Russia in the long run. Almost definitely. Like I said, if, mm, if a deal was struck, I can definitely foresee Wagner being sidelined more often in the future. And because they're one of the few more competent aspects of the Russian presence in Ukraine, that means it's going to be a lot harder for Russia to keep the current gr the ground it still has. Right. And if mm, Wagner is still a rogue element in Russia, mm, as much as, mm, as I like to criticize the Russian military for its performance in Ukraine and its performance in an actual war, one thing that I know the Russians are, mm, that Russia under Putin is good at is internal security. Mm -hmm. Ruskvardia and mm, the FSB, mm, they're going to... Mm, they're going to have to drop the hammer on Prigozhin and Wagner if this is going to continue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Not to mention, seeing as mm, Wagner was mm, completely reliant on Russian supply and Russian, Russian intel, Russian ammunition, Russian vehicles, mm -hmm. as was made public, mm, very clearly public when... Prigozhin very famously called out Shoigu Gerasimov, where the fuck is the ammunition <laughs> in relation to mm, Bakhmut? Yeah, I remember that. 
Yeah, but ultimately, the Russian MOD has Wagner by the balls, essentially. They can cut off his supplies, and then it doesn't matter how competent they are. A military a PMC is only as good as the supplies they're getting. And they easily have Putin by the balls, especially if this deal is true. I mean, literally, as we said, um, if they were if they were able to negotiate a deal in favor of them, that shows Putin isn't willing to stand up to the pressure of the heat. It makes them look very weak. So they, yeah, you know, they have control from what it sounds like. Again, if this is true, still not enough confirmation on either side as of right yeah. now. But either way, this goes. I can tell you the outcome right now: decisive Ukraine victory. Exactly. This just helps that up. Uh, Helps that counteroffensive, disorderly, this just disinformation, confusion, exactly what Ukraine can really use and really put pressure on Russia at this point. Mm-hmm. Now, last thing here, and we'll wrap it up. I wonder why Lukashenko went to Turkey. That's kind of weird. That's definitely been yeah. confirmed. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing in Turkey either. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. We're going to be watching this information, of course. Uh, make sure you keep up to date on it as well. I'm sure it's going to be a whole different story later today. Um, we'll find out again probably later today as well whether or not this deal has been true or is true. But and stuff. hopefully we'll have an update by the time our season finale rolls around next week. Yes, exactly. So we'll wrap things up for today. Ash, anything else you want to add to it before we kind of end this? Uh, nothing much aside from uh, Slava Ukraini, Hero and Slava. Exactly. So again, emergency episode. We hope we don't have to do these. We only do them if there's some big, like big giant event going on. For example, if we were to uh, have started the podcast in early 2022, I'm sure we would have done one for the start of the invasion. So hopefully we don't have to uh, keep going back to these. But again, please let us know what you think of them. Leave a like, subscribe. This episode will be going out by tonight. And with that being said, uh, the episode tomorrow, episode 11 of season 3, will still go. Will still be going out as normal. Of course, some of the content we talked about, which we mainly focused on the Titan, as of by now, has been all over. The story is basically over at that point. The sub has imploded. Besides that, I, would say, I think we talked about it on Wednesday, so this, we hadn't found out yet. But, but it looks like our theory was confirmed. Yeah, I think we in that episode we gave a pretty good theory on what happened to it anyway, so... Hopefully the news isn't too late, but I think we'll be good with that. Anyways, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, join us on Patreon, and join us on Discord. And we will see you next week for hopefully a regular episode. Emergency meeting adjourned.